In this lesson, we're going to look at conditional statements and their converse. Now, before we start the examples, it's a good idea to read through the following terms to make sure you understand them. We're going to use them, um, but just so you know what I'm talking about as we go through. Okay, let's start with the first example. Now, when we look at um, conditional statements, we're going to talk about whether they're valid or invalid or true or false. And it says here that the only time that a statement is false is if the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. But what does that mean? So before we actually look at these truth tables and how to evaluate them, what is a conditional statement? What is the hypothesis? What is the conclusion? So for example, one here, it says, if a shape is a square and it is also a rectangle, verify whether this statement is true. So what is the hypothesis of the statement? It says that a shape is a square. Right? That's this part. It is also a rectangle would be the conclusion. So there's my hypotheses and there's my conclusion. Now remember when we're dealing with that conditional statement, the if then is very important, right? Without the if then before the hypotheses and the conclusion, it's not considered a conditional statement. So now how do we decide if the statement is true or false? Well, truth tables can help. Let's look at another conditional statement I added to the top here. It says, you study for four or more... Oh, I lost the if. There you go. If you study for four or more hours, you'll get an A on the exam. So the hypotheses, you study for four or more hours. Conclusion, you get an A on the exam. So if your teacher tells you this, right, that you study for four or more hours, and you do get an A on the exam, it's understood that the statement is true, right? So if the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is true, then P implies Q, or our conditional statement is true. Now when you're dealing with the truth table, you're gonna to have to look at every combination of true and false. So we've got true, true, we've got true, false, We've got false true and false false. And we're going to look at each and every one of those combinations. Okay? So if your teacher tells you that if you study for four more hours, you'll get an an exam and you do study, so your hypothesis is true, you do study for four more hours, but you do not get an an exam and your teacher has lied to you. And that's a false statement. Okay. Now, if you do not study for four more hours, we didn't tell you what the outcome was going to be for that situation. Nowhere in this conditional statement tells you what happens if you don't study for four more hours. So for both of these statements, right, the conclusion is going to be true. Okay, so when your hypothesis is false, your conclusion is always going to be true because we didn't tell you what's going to happen in another instance. We only told you what was going to happen if you study for four more hours. Okay, so that's how truth tables work. And you'll notice here, I'm going to just use a highlighter to emphasize, that this here is going to be your only case where the conditional statement is going to be false. Okay. So if your hypothesis is true and your conclusion is false, your conditional statement's always going to be false. Let's go back and look at our example here with the square and the rectangle. Now, before we look at it with the truth table, let's take a look at it with a Venn diagram. So with a Venn diagram, we know that a shape is a square. Let's draw this diagram first. So here's my square. 
properties of a square, all four sides are equal, and a rectangle, opposite side lengths are equal. Right? But they both have four sides and they both have 90 degree angles. Now, if I use A defined as the universal set, okay, and I use R for the set of rectangles, then a subset of that would be S. Because squares are special cases of rectangles. Is a square a rectangle? Yes. It's got four sides, opposite sides are equal, but it's a special case where actually all four sides are equal. But there's no way that a rectangle can be a square. Okay? So S is a subset of R, which is a subset of A. That's a visual. Now if we look at it in terms of the statements, okay, they've got three cases here. It says, if a shape is not a square, then it is also not a rectangle. So they're saying, if this is false, the shape is not a square, and this is false, well then that's a true statement, right? Go back to our truth table up here, right? False, false, true, because they didn't tell us what was going to happen if the shape is not a square. If the shape is not a square, false. And it is also a rectangle, true. Again, false statement first, right? So the statement's going to be true because we didn't want to tell you what was going to happen if it was another shape. But if a shape is a square, then it is also not a rectangle. Well, that's a false statement, right? Look at our truth table. True, false, false. Okay. So that's how we evaluate those statements. Okay, let's take a look at example two. It says, recall the conditional statement, if a shape is a square, then it is also a rectangle. Is the converse of the statement true or false? Justify your decision. Well, what does converse mean? If you look back at your definitions, the converse means that we switch P and Q. So now it would say if a shape is a rectangle then it's also a square. So you can see where my hypothesis was before it is also a rectangle is now first and if a shape is a square is the second part, right? We've switched those around. So now what we have to do is evaluate this. Now there's two ways you can look at this. You can do a truth table again. Or you can look for a counterexample. And we'll look at that one in a moment. So let's take a look at the truth table first. So for a truth table, now you've got Q, P, and then Q implies P, right? So there's my truth table. Now what is it saying here? It says if a shape is a rectangle, true. Okay, a shape is a rectangle, then it is also a square. And that would be false. And so that's the case where true, false, that statement would be false. Now if we look at a counterexample, well, this shape here, I can draw it, with these two being six, and these two sides being four, right? There is a rectangle, but it is not a square. Okay, so there's an example. You'd have to write that. So, this is a rectangle, but not a square. 
so false. So you need to have some sort of statement that goes along with your counterexample in most instances. I'm going to skip example three. Let's turn the page and look at example four. Oh, at the bottom of example three here, there's just um, some notation here where you have P double arrow Q. That's the notation for P if and only if Q. This means that both the conditional statement and the converse are true statements or biconditional. Okay, so let's look at example four. A person who cannot distinguish between certain colors is colorblind. Write the sentence as a conditional statement in if P then Q form. So you can see here, I just took the statement. It wasn't a conditional statement yet, but by adding the if a person cannot distinguish between certain colors, then, I lost the end, then that person is colorblind. That is now a conditional statement. Now remember, to write the converse, we need to flip the P and Q. So let's go ahead and do that. So now my converse statement says, if a person is colorblind, then that person cannot distinguish between certain colors. The last part of this is to evaluate whether or not our statement is biconditional. Now how do you determine if a statement is biconditional? It's only biconditional if the conditional statement and the converse statement are both true. So if we look at the first one, if a person cannot distinguish between certain colors, then that person is colorblind. That statement is true. If we look at the second one, if a person is colorblind, then that person cannot distinguish between certain colors. That statement is also true. So if both the conditional and the converse statement we just said are true, then it's biconditional. Now we can write it as a biconditional statement. Let's go ahead and do that. Remember, when we're writing the biconditional statement, we're using the if and only if statement, and that's from the original conditional statement, okay? So a person is colorblind if and only if that person cannot distinguish between certain colors. Okay, there's one last example here. It says Reed stated the following biconditional statement. A quadrilateral is a square if and only if all of its sides are equal. Is Reed's biconditional statement true? Explain. So very similar to example four, but you're working backwards. You're starting at the biconditional and you're gonna get back the converse, okay? And then you're gonna test whether or not there's a counter example. I'd like you to try that one on your own. Reminder, a quadrilateral is a four-sided shape. Okay, so if you think of four-sided shapes, rhombus, rectangle, parallelogram, square, okay, those are all examples of four-sided shapes, and that should help you complete that example. We'll go over that one in class. Take a look at the last page of this section. Just the key ideas, it's a nice summary here. Um, conditional statement consists of hypotheses and conclusion. Different ways to write the conditional statement include the following, right? And we've got our truth table. This should go on your study sheet, your cheat sheet. They do show up on exams quite often, okay? And then some other information that we discussed. Make sure you come and see me if you have any questions. Reminder to come in for extra help as well. Thanks for joining me.